Hey guys, real quick test here for you today. In one of my recent videos, I reviewed the 24 volt SOK lithium iron phosphate battery. One of my viewers asked if I can do a 100 amp discharge test on the battery, see what the measured capacity is and how hot the battery gets. I'm actually going to do this test on the 12 volt battery, simply because the only 24 volt inverter I have does not go up quite that high. With the 12 volt inverter, I can pull approximately 2500 watts or a 2C load. So we're just going to settle around 1C or 100 amps today, which is the max rating of this battery. And I'm going to watch that test very closely, and as soon as it cuts out, I'm going to open up the battery quickly. You can see I've already got the screws removed, and we'll use the FLIR thermal camera just to see how warm it is inside. All right, battery has completed charging. And since this is a higher amperage test, I did make some shorter and thicker uh, cabling here from the battery to the inverter just to reduce the overall voltage drop across the cable. Uh, these are one aught cables on both the negative and the positive side. Other than that, it's pretty much the same, the same Batrium shunt, the same inverter, and then I have my space heater over there for a load, in addition to the incandescent light bulbs in case I need them. All right, so we're sitting at 97.3 amps. I don't want to push it too much more because as this voltage decreases, remember this amperage is going to go up a little bit. So uh, I think that's a fair test. 97.7, it is still increasing a little bit. So we'll leave this run until the BMS shuts down. All right, so the test just shut down. We're gonna go ahead and take this lid off here. Alright, so the cells are sitting around 45 to 46 degrees Celsius. Doesn't look too bad at all. 45 is really the hottest I see in here. Uh, the vents are around 44 degrees Celsius as well, I see. There's another 44. The cabling's around 47 degrees. The BMS is really the hottest part. I think I saw 54, 55 degrees Celsius there. There's a 60 degrees. Oh, there we go. Underneath where the FETs are, I can see 61, 62, 63. So, yeah. And it actually, whoa, that is actually hot. That BMS is very hot. So, I'm not getting a temperature on here because the thermal camera is reflecting on that surface. I'm going to stick a piece of Kapton tape over the BMS here and see if I can get a temperature of the heat sink. Let's see. 60 degrees Celsius, so it's agreeing with what I saw of the FET transistors on the side. That's not too bad. I mean, that is definitely hot and toasty warm, but... And there's really no noticeable heat at all on the terminals themselves, so... Um, again, we have a max of 45 on the cells and 60 to 63 on the BMS. That battery pulled 103 amp hours. That is over 100% of its rated capacity, even at a 100 amp load. That is crazy cool. So yeah, I'll go generate the discharge curve graph and we'll take a look at the numbers on that as well. So here's the discharge graph from this test. We started at 13.9 volts and ended at 9.5 volts. The average discharge current was 100.6 amps and the test took approximately 62 minutes. All right, it was very cool to see how this battery performed at a high discharge rate like that. I hadn't done anything like that before, um, at least not with the SOK battery. So uh, I'm very surprised to see it did test at 103 amp hours. I was expecting it to be somewhere in the high 90s, um, but these are new cells and I haven't cycled this battery very much yet. So I um, hope that answers that question. If there's anything else you want to see, either battery or solar or anything related, uh, feel free to leave any suggestions for videos in the comments. Um, otherwise, please hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.